Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the finale of season one of Inside the Mind, the show where we talk about online marketing strategy, what it is, why it's important, and why you should care. Now we've covered a lot of ground in the last 21 episodes, each episode holding a piece of the puzzle for building your own strategy map for your creating or reinvigorating your online marketing strategy. In order to understand each element, we had to break it down and rearrange it. Now we're going to rebuild it. The real order looks something more like this. Now let's begin. The very first step is to establish the goals of your strategy. Without it, there's no point in moving forward without a clear direction in mind. Establish benchmarks and key performance indicators so that you know things are working or when they're not working. This might take some tweaking as you learn about the process and remember to keep your eyes open for unexpected results. If you're measuring traffic with no growth but your interaction ends up skyrocketing, you may like that a little bit better. You might be onto something. Scope out the competition for a while too. Learn what they're doing right and more importantly, what they should be doing better. As you're doing this, make note of weaknesses. Poor customer service is pretty easy to spot, but try to read between the lines on things like user experience on their website or bad communication strategies. You want to look out too for gathering places. Uh, places where people who are critical of the brand or brand evangelists gather online to voice their opinions. Look out too for commonalities. Find out what the haters have in common with each other and what the lovers have in common. This could be music, hobbies, or even geographic data like home state. This is important info and this is how you're going to get their attention when it's time for you to promote. By building a relationship with each one of these people, you're laying the groundwork for organic customer growth and guest blogging opportunity. Use the information you've gathered about what your customers love and what they don't like about your competition to develop a brand character. This is an actual personality that embodies your strengths and triumphs where other people fail. Your brand character will be the tone and the voice that is underlying the four types of content that will stand out to your target market. All right, here's the recap. We've got four major types of content. We've got viral, discussion, lead, and sales. And if you really want to be strategic about it, you have each of these different pieces work together like pieces of a puzzle. Intimately knowing your market helps you to develop engaging content that tells a vivid story to your potential customer. Plus, when you know what their burning questions are, you'll know exactly what research to do in order to create truly valuable content. And using all of this, you can determine whether new media formats will work in your favor. You may be able to incorporate live streaming, GIFs or podcasts somewhere in your content strategy. If you think your audience is going to love it, test it out. So all of that is basically this first giant step. Call it the top of the funnel. Once you have a feeling for who your market is and the kinds of content you're going to create, it's time to explore ways to drive traffic back to your website. Once you have found a few ways that work for you, look for ways to intelligently automate. Now, obviously in order to make money, you have to actually sell something. At this point, you're going to start creating landing pages using what you've learned about your market. Make sure that your design and copy gently guide your prospect towards a buying decision. This copy structure works really well. Sign up for my email list below and I'll, I'll send it to you. It's important to know that the fastest way to drive traffic back to your landing pages is by using paid strategies. So if you're going to invest money into lead generation, it's also important to understand the costs involved. Otherwise, you could end up like this guy. Now, it might just happen that after a while for selling your service, you feel like you're not getting enough income for the work that you put in. If you reach this point, it's time to raise your prices. If things don't go as smoothly as planned, take a deep breath. It's totally natural to face resistance. You can and will overcome it. It's just a sign that it's time for you to turn pro and learn from your mistakes without letting them stop you dead in your tracks. And that's it. That's all I've got for season one of Inside the Mind. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be taking a few months off to get ready for season two, which will be coming back in the fall. Uh, but don't worry, though, this is not the last you've heard from me. In fact, we got a few really big things that we've got in the works, including a Kickstarter project, which I'll be telling you about real soon. If you like this episode, please give it a little thumbs up and a comment. And if you like the show, please show some love by clicking on this playlist and sharing it across the entire interwebs. One of the main reasons we're even doing this show is so that we can mainstream the concepts of online marketing strategy and make it fun and accessible. And if you thought what we did here was either one of those things, please share this playlist with everyone you know. If you sign up via email too, you can get all of the reruns 
and exclusive bonus goodies and get a first look at some of the season two stuff when it gets closer to that time. Thank you so much again for watching and giving your feedback and, being, and helping to make this show to be something really, truly something to be proud of. We've learned a lot from you and we hope that you've gotten a lot out of us too. Thank you so much again and I'll see you again real soon.